right now we have host of Locked On Wizards podcast, Brandon Scott, on the show. Brandon, welcome back to the urban sports scene, my man. What's good, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. Like, you know, I, I feel good. I mean, I'm talking commanders, not feeling that good about this team. But, <laughs> I mean, the Wizards, I'm not, I mean, the Wizards, I felt like they were fighting. Like, one thing I'll say about the Wizards over these, these last stretch, since the, the Pacers win, right? The Pacers win. Since yeah, the Pacers yeah. win, I felt like, you know, as a team, now you're not getting, like, wins and losses in terms of, like, the results or haven't been what they probably wanted. But I feel like they fight. They're fighting more. And they're playing a better brand of basketball. Well, yeah, I mean, they're definitely fighting more, man. Um, across the board. <laughs> well, I, like I mean, did that. <laughs> <laughs> like that. I like that. I mean, if you look at like, this, man, I mean, a lot of the vets know what it is, man. You know yeah. I mean, they know the deadline's coming up. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them are fighting for that next bag or the next opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, man, I, I talked to Landry Shamit at, um, at Shoot Around, man, uh, oh, Christmas uh -huh. Eve. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, look, man, um, what's your mind frame? You know, the, the deadline's coming up. Are you kind of in the moment? Or you think about the deadline, and he's like, look, man, I've been traded before. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, if, I, <laughs> you know, if I get moved, I get moved, man. But so, you know, the best thing. Yeah, man, he's honest. You know, his business. Yeah. You know, he know, a lot of them know that, you know, look, it could happen. You know, this is a yeah. rebuilding team, Um, especially if you look at guys like Gaff. I mean, yeah, he's an extension, man. But you got to look at this team like everybody's tradable oh, except for Blau. Everybody. 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 I agree. See, thank you. Thank you for saying that. I totally agree. Everybody's <laughs> tradable except for Blau. I, yeah. I am with you. All right, so I came here because I, you know, I I want to talk about this because this is a topic that it just hit me. I was like, I was I was covering the game and I saw the play, and then I was watching the West Coast trip, and I was like, okay, like oh boy, hot, like you know, what I mean, oh boy, and I'm talking about Tyrus Jones. He's retired. Jones is is hot. Like oh, yeah. he's playing some good basketball, and we'll talk about in terms of draft what that I mean trades what that can implement what that can do for the Wizards. But last, I mean, last night Jordan Poole dropped thirty, probably get probably his second best game I think in terms of efficiency to me. Um, against the Orlando Magic, uh, they lost the Magic 127-119. His teammate mentioned Tyus Jones. Tyus Jones had 20 points in the same game. Um, right now, the Wizards are down to the um, to the Raptors. I think they were last time I checked, they were down 13. I could be wrong. Um, both both players both players were acquired in the offseason. In your opinion, who has been the better offseason pickup, Tyus Jones or Jordan Poole? Oh, good question, man. Uh, right now, it is Tyus Jones. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say this, man. It's getting a little more even the more that Jordan Poole, he's trying, he's trying to, to lock in. Yeah. He's trying to lock in, man. But mm -hmm. Tyus Jones, you know, he came in uh, replacing Monte Morris. You know, he's yeah. been that floor general for us, man. Yeah. You know, we said it before, man. You know, Monte did his job, but was he the long-term answer? Nah. Not I mean, yet. looking at Tyus, man, you know, Tyus came in. He's that floor general we needed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, his assist numbers are right where I want him to be. You know, that's, that floater is money. I mean, he's shooting high percent of shots. I mean, that floater is unstoppable, man. Yeah, I mean, he's, and it's wild because he's had, and I, got, I said this to him, because uh, I asked, well, actually, I saw him, I talked to him, I, and mm. we had, like, this discussion. And I said, like, dude, you've been doing this since, like, yeah. Duke. Like, you have the floater. Like, it's so yeah. why I told him, like, shoot it. Like, I don't know why you're not, and I even, like, I'm being real, I was aggressive. Like, bro, shoot it. Yeah. Like, you act like you're, like, I know this is a new team, but shoot it. Like, yeah. that's your shot. Like, that's your shot. Like, that's an unstoppable shot for you. But, yeah, go, go on, go on. No, nah, I mean, mm -hmm. you would it, man. I mean, that, that mm -hmm. shot is money. I mm -hmm. mean, he's been playing some good basketball. He's exactly what this team needed at the point guard position because, I mean, getting to join Poole, um, he, is he ready to be that guy at point guard yet? Nah, he's not ready yet. Um, yeah. Obviously, he has some things to work on, uh, shooting low percentage shots, you know, turnovers, uh, stuff like that. But yeah. I say that they're getting closer because, you know, the more that Jordan Poole locks in, he's starting to lock in. It, yeah. The biggest thing, man, is he had to acclimate to being in D.C., you know, you come over from a team who is a championship contender where, you know, he can. Oh, absolutely. Because, he, you know, a lot of these, uh, you know, these moments where, you know, immature moments, you can call them. They were kind of mm -hmm. shielded in Golden State because yeah. you had that, you know, that veteran leadership. Whereas here, mm -hmm. he's the guy, you know, him and Kyle Kuzma, you know, they're, they're the duo. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's more up front. So when he does these things, everybody sees it. And now it's, you know, but uh, he's well, starting to lock in, man. I'm telling you right now, you know, look at him in the practice, man. Um, He is. He's locking in. You can see the performances. Um. He, you know, he has some things to work on. I mean, he needs uh, both him and Kuz. They gotta utilize that shot clock, man. I mean, you know, three, four seconds in the shot clock, they're launching it, man. They they gotta work on that. Um, shooting a lot more hops in the shots. You know, they've they've got to learn to use the personnel around them. You know, they cannot yeah. feel compelled to play hero ball every time down the court. So, so I had a, I had a poll out there who's who's been the uh, better off season acquisition. 86 percent uh pool i mean sorry jones and 14 percent had pool um so 
to me, it's I mean, I I, I mean, I've, I've been pro Tyus Jones. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. so it's I'm biased. Um, <laughs> I have. I just feel like you know, to your point, they just play a t- one. He played the smarter brand of basketball, which yeah. I just I just like. Um, Golden State, that like you said, it's a different style of basketball. Yeah. But you got two do you have? But you have um, you have a brand though, right? Mm-hmm. Steph, Draymond, Clay. That's a brand, and they've been doing it at a high level. And yes, you helped them win a the championship. But they they are the institution though, and yeah. so when you try to bring a Golden State style of play to another team, like that free that free that free that free ball shooting the ball anywhere type of game, yeah. you don't have Steph, you don't have Clay, you don't have Draymond. Like you have another, you have a team that's that's bad, yeah. right? So you have a, you're doing that stuff with a bad team. It don't work the same. That mm-hmm. it don't work the same. You got to play a different brand of basketball. It works in Golden State, obviously. But it won't work here in D.C. So I just didn't like for me, the problem I had with him is more of a just like winning basketball. Like, I, yeah. I just can't stand like taking like you said, taking a one legged three point shot when you're, you know what I mean? Things like yeah. that or just like chucking up a three off try to make it off the backboard, for, like falling away from the from falling on the baseline. Like, nah, that's not that's not good in no style of play. Right. Like, shoot, even Steph don't shoot stuff like that. So to a point of like, yeah, I know yeah, he feels that he's probably on a bad team. And he can do whatever he wants, but that doesn't. You're still you're still setting an example for the young dudes, and it's best. And also, you're sending like other players who, like a Corey Kisper, is looking at you like, bro, you playing over me, doing this junk, like you know what I mean? Like I'm serious, yeah. like you know what I mean? Like players talk amongst themselves. You like this is what they pay, like because this is who they paid a hundred hundred plus mil to get. They look at it, they looking at you strange. But I don't know any better. He just happened to be in the states, so he don't know better. <laughs> So Bilal, so Bilal cool with him, but that don't mean that Bilal just happened to be in the States. So my man Jay, uh, he tweet, he, he hit us up on X said, Pool will be a better, will be better long term, but Tyus is suddenly is suddenly playing well enough to get you a first rounder. Do you think Tyus can get them a first rounder? I think it is definitely something that could be attainable this offseason, okay. man. Or not offseason, but at the deadline. Okay. Uh, because I'm looking at Houston. Houston's one team that's rumored to be looking at Tyus Jones, man, because look, he's proven that he can spot start. Now, yeah. is Tyus Jones necessarily an answer for an organization as the guy point guard going forward? Eh, it's remaining to be seen, but he, yeah. you know, he's always been the best backup point guard in the NBA. And, always, you know, yeah. his, his play with the Wizards has really showcased what he can do. I mean, if you need a guy who's going to come in and who doesn't necessarily need the ball in his hands, who can who can be that guy that the floor general is going to set people up, then, you know, George, I mean, Tyus Jones is your guy. You know, he's been that floor general that we needed for this team. You know, he sent a lot of guys up. Um, so Houston, to me, would be a team to look out for. Uh, another sleeper, the Lakers, man. The Lakers might be a destination in itself. Oh, yeah, we would love it. I'm a Lakers fan. So, yeah, that would be good. I like, I would <laughs> yeah, man, Lakers would definitely be a target. D-Lo, get him out of here. Did y'all, want D- did y'all want D-Lo? Y'all can have D-Lo. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> no <man. laughs> I mean, he fit. He fit. There's a freestyle and get to his squad. He fit. The Wizards don't like they got Kuz. I mean, yeah, Kuz. I know, <laughs> he gonna I have mean, to fit somewhere pool, else, man. <laughs> cool pulls a D-Lo? Oh man, <laughs> dog. Hey, the entertainment. I'm just alone. The Shaq in the full moments would be great. I'm just saying. I'm just oh saying. man, can you imagine D-Lo and Jordan Poole, hey, man, launching hey, those? <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. What if you told me ties to LA? I'm like, yo, y'all can have y'all can have D-Lo. <laughs> Shoot. Talking about bad shot takers. That's the that'd be the all time worst shot taking squad period in life. I'm oh sorry. man, they'd be on Shaq and the Fool every day. All every saying. day, <laughs> every they would be subscribed to that every oh. day. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess that. So I get my all right. My second question that my second question is who would bring who would bring you more? Would it be a Tyus or a Jordan Poole if you had to trade either or? Who would bring you more? Who would bring you more back? Uh, right now, Ty is easy because well, you know, that's he's... wild to me. Ain't that funny though? Real talk, ain't that funny? Yeah. I agree with you, but ain't that funny though? Like, if you ask folks before, you know, before the season when they made the trade, you know, they okay, he gonna score. Oh, he going to Wizards. Yeah. He gonna score. He gonna fry. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's not. I expected him to shoot the ball a lot. That doesn't bother me. But that's still yeah. like the the amount of shots he takes. I expect him. Expect him to be a little not to say be efficient, because so, you don't have to be efficient. Yeah. Efficient. But to at least have a common sense basketball game with the process, because you're playing with, because you are coming from a championship squad. Like there is levels to this, and you're playing with Steph. Like Steph shoots some wild shots, but it's different though. Like because you know Steph has that consistency, right? And also, I would say that they're not as wild as as, as Jordan Poole. They're not as wild because nah. they're still in the in in control for Steph. 
they're yeah. in control. Like Jordan Poole looks out of control when he's shooting these shots sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, but it amazes me that like, cause I thought about that when I, when I came up with that question, it was like, dude, I mean, Ty, like Jordan Poole is a younger dude. Yeah, He's a dude that, you know, he was averaging 20 points at with Golden State coming off the bench. Like, so he would be a guy that you would kind of think like, all right, you know, and he's still like, like I said, relatively young. He would, yeah. you would think he would be a guy that would get more, but you know, overhearing some folks like aren't interested in trading for him or whatnot. To your point, it's crazy that Tyus Jones would probably bring you, bring you more back if you traded him. Well, I mean, in, in, in hindsight, can, yeah. you got to look at the trade differently now, right? Yeah. At first it's like, okay, we're acquiring a guy who's still young, hasn't his prime yet. You know, he's putting up big numbers on the championship team, but now it's like, Okay, <laughs> I can see why they were, you yeah. know, so willing to give him up. It's because, yeah. you know, the, the the maturity factor. You know, yeah. yeah I mean, he's got a. I, I say this, man. You know, it's frustrating watching him. Um, but <laughs> you know, this thing, he's got to acclimate to who where he's at. You know, he's not yeah. in Golden State anymore. Sure. It's kind of like you, yeah. you guys were talking about Commanders. You know, it's like Eric Bieniemy needs to realize he's in Washington, he's not Kansas City no more. Sure. It's kind of like That's you true. know, it's, it's, it's you know what I mean? It's Jordan Poole. You know, like once he figures out where he's at. And what he needs to do, because right now, you best believe both the organization and Jordan Poole both know that, look, he's got to bring his value up if we want to move him. Because at first, he thought he was going to be the guy. And that yeah. organiz organization said, ah, hold up, man. Look, yeah. <laughs> you know, we like you, but we're going to flip you. So, yeah. but right now, who's going to trade for him? Because with all those issues, you know, in that contract, you're not going to pay that guy just to be able to, you know, three seconds in the shot clock launching the ball. You know, he, it nah. behooves both parties to get his value up. Now, if I'm the GM, I'm going to okay. be transparent with him, man. I'm going to be like, look, yeah. man, if you don't want to be in D.C. long term, help us get your value up, and then we will flip you. You know, and go from there. Yeah. I can't, why, why do I think that's happening? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm telling you right now. I think you know, that's happening. I think that's ha actually happening, to be honest with you. I felt like it was happening. For instance, in my opinion, it was happening. I, I forgot which game because I was there. Mm. It was a game that Tyus had, like, and I'm not just I'm, I'm being real, like, because they played Jordan the whole fourth, and Tyus didn't see the the court at all and yeah. Tyus had like 18 within three quarters had 18 and didn't yeah. play the single fourth quarter and I was like wow that's interesting Jordan's just it's just Jordan and I'm like oh okay and then he said he wanted and I remember uh coach was like he wanted to give you know you know uh pull some momentum who started yeah. to feel a little good or whatever but I was thinking to myself to, to your point what you're just saying now it's like okay you know what maybe they're just trying to raise a stock because because oh, yeah. in terms of coaching basketball, if someone has 18 and three quarters, they're going to play in the fourth. Yeah. They're going to. I don't care what kind of defense they're playing. They're going to play in the fourth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, like I said, man, I, I didn't mean to cut you all bro. Um, no, no, no. You're good. No, everybody no. on this team is tradable outside of And I think that yeah. that is kind of the MO with the front office right now. Because, look, they're looking at two examples. Oklahoma City, obviously, and okay. Orlando. If you look at Orlando – you know, the fact that they hit on their draft picks, Franz Wagner, man, at 6'10", oh. and him being a two-way player, I mean, yeah. he is a sniper. I mean, yes. you look at Paolo, I mean, the list goes on. I mean, the thousands of guards they have in Orlando. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you got to hit through draft picks. And when it comes time to make that one or two moves to solidify your team for contention, they're going to make it. So they're going to take their time. But, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people being shot. I mean, the Knicks right now losing Mitchell Robinson for the year. Yeah. They're Gafford. looking at Daniel Gafford right now. You know, yeah. Daniel Gafford is definitely Perfect. a target for them. Uh, Tyus in Houston, uh, you know, Coos is going to command. I mean, I if, I look, Larry Marketing, bro, they want five first rounders for Larry Marketing right now. So, realistically, could we maybe get a couple of picks for Coos? It's a possibility. I mean, yeah, Marketing is like an all star, too, though. Yeah, but I mean, Marketing to me is more of a role guy. He's not a guy where he's like, oh, I like Marketing. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> I no, no, no. I'll take him to LA too. I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm a big fan of Laurie Marketing, man. Yeah, but it's yeah. like, I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Though. I know exactly yeah. what you're saying. Though. He's not exactly a guy where it's like, all right, here's the ball. You're talking so about he ain't a superstar. I know yeah. what you're talking about. He on a bad. I, I get exactly what you're talking about. I get exactly what you're talking about. Like, he shouldn't be wrong. Like, that's 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 how those type of picks are warranted for a. Like you get all that all those first round picks, it's for like a, a, a Anthony Davis or I know yeah. you're talking about like the player of that caliber. No, I totally agree with you. You're right. But then it also shows how much the NBA right now values role guys. Yeah, you know, Rudy Gobert, man. I mean, he's he's yeah. not necessarily a well, guy you build off. around, he but he just off. fit just right. I mean, look yeah. at Minnesota. I'm just saying. Hey, good. So. No, it's a good. That's a perfect fit though. Like I agree, that was a perfect fit because Cat doesn't have to play the, the five. He can play the four. I thought it was a perfect fit to be honest with you. Um, but so hold on, what about I know we talked about Detroit? What about trying to get Ivy out of uh 
Detroit, would you trade like a, to Katayas get out of Detroit? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I love hey Monty. I love you, man. You DMV, man. You I had you on the show one time. Monty, you're awesome. But you ain't playing my guys. I ain't gonna lie to you, Monty. That's the only thing that's bothering me. You're not playing any of my dudes. Like, you're not yeah. playing my man Wiseman. You ain't playing my man Ivy. It's like you got something against me personally. I feel like you're going against <laughs> me. Like, I ain't like you ain't playing my guys. Like these, like, these are dudes that I really, really like. And they I, I thought they was gonna fry this year. I know you like K K is cool. All right, K is cool. I know you gonna make K's team, but shoot, yeah. man. Like, play my guys. So you I mean, Ivy? What about Ivy? What about Ivy? Ivy? Man would be a nice addition to NBC, man. But I mean, fit wise, would he fit in the same backcourt with Jordan Poole? I, I mean, mean the thing be that long. That's why I said Ivy. Yeah. I mean, it's intriguing, man. Because I mean, why not? If you're Detroit, I mean, you just set the record. So I mean, you. I mean, you, you're not winning nothing anytime. You're not nah, winning. no you're time. Definitely soon. Get, you're definitely. I mean, I mean, lottery, whatever. But you should be getting the first pick overall. So I mean. No, they definitely getting the first pick. Yeah, like you making you make it, they making it happen. <laughs> I mean, to me, man, why not take a chance on Wiseman and Bagley? I mean, I know Wiseman hasn't I like really those two. Played, because I mean, look, we know that they have ways to go. They need to be developed, but why not? That's where we're about right now. We're trying to yeah. develop young guys. Who would, still you young. To get, who would you trade for those though? Because you wouldn't need it. You wouldn't have to trade a player. No. I or I mean, you you, you could have, you could throw a player just to throw one, but not. Like a real good player, you could throw in. Who would you who would you trade to get Wiseman? Um, I would throw a veteran aspiring deal and a young guy, Johnny Davis, and perfect. Shannon. I could definitely yep. get you Wiseman because they don't want to play. Yeah, that for real. I mean, because his, his 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 stock has been low because Monty has dragged it. So yeah, no, that's a good one. Yeah, they can definitely take. Uh, yeah, they could take him. They could take. Uh, I feel bad for that kid. <laughs> um, the one from the Wizards, not Wiseman. I feel bad for Wiseman. I feel bad for the one from Wisconsin. Uh. The Wisconsin kid, what's his name? Uh, the uh, Johnny kid. Davis. I feel bad for Johnny Davis, man. <laughs> like I don't need. I didn't. I thought it was a bad. I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought it was a bad pick when it when it came out when it happened. But I was like, damn. But I watched him play. I felt real bad for him because I I I know. I mean, I coach ball. I know when a player loses his confidence. Like I know yeah, we're yeah. in. Like they're defeated mentally, and I don't. I hope he gets some type of swag back. Because at the end of the day, I've always said this. Every pro, I know a lot of people want to, to crap on pro basketball players, say somebody garbage. One, that dude would dog the crap out of you if he played you one on one. So don't oh, ever say that shit. I always tell folks that, like, don't ever say that because because that person would dog the shit out of you. Um, secondly, um, like, like he scored average about twenty one year in, in in Wisconsin, so he has the capability of being a scorer. It's just that he has to find that edge, that swag. He got to find it. And I, it's it's been gone. It's been gone. I mean, for whatever reason, he's lost it here. Yeah. Uh, he just has to get it back. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I, I, but I, I see it. And I'm like, damn, man. Like, even when I'm I'm at pressers and people ask questions about him, like, damn, you ask, like he a charity case? Like, yeah, ask these charity case questions. Yeah. Like, I'm like, damn, man. I get it. Like, I get it. But, like, come on, man. Like, so I I actually I actually root for him, even though it was a dude that thought he was a bad pick for the yeah. team. I root for him because I just feel like he is so like he gets no playing time and he's a lottery pick. He gets nothing like, yeah. like you've given up on him early. That's what I'm saying. Like you, they gave up on him. Early. It's like West had him and yeah. like, you ain't it period. Like his rookie year period. Like the, his first year having West had him. You're not it. Like well, that I mean, doesn't happen for a lottery dude. That, that barely happens. Well, I mean, they, here's the thing with Johnny Davis, man. And like I said, um, Christmas Eve, they had to shoot around. I went up there and I watched him. I watched him yeah. and Bilal shoot around, man. And yeah. his shot could be fixed. Now, he, he he, if you look at the placement of his shot, man, it's too close to his head. He needs yeah. a higher trajectory. But here's the thing. They tried to tinker with him early on. When they started mm -hmm. about point guards, like, he's not a point guard. He's a shooting guard who's a scorer for a shooting guard. Let him be, you know, be what he is. Um, yeah. Stop trying to make him a three-point shooter. He's not a three-point shooter. I mean, yeah. you know, he's a mid-range jump. You know, I mean, he's a mid-range guy. So yeah. you know, when they tinker with his – well, who he is as a player, yeah, I, and I'm with you, man. You know, confidence wise, his confidence is down. You just see that, man. Yes, yeah, and man. the fact that they're not playing him, even with Delon being out, I mean, I know he's back now, but you yeah. know, Delon still is going to be a minutes restriction. So yeah. that he's, in my opinion, I don't know, I'm not, I don't know really who to blame, whether it's Wes, front office, but you know, the fact that he's not getting playing time, this is year two. You know, confidence wise, they destroyed the confidence. I That's mean, what I'm saying. Like he's been, it's been shattered dreams, bro. Like shattered dreams. I'm like, I've never like his confidence is yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what 
what concerns me about him. But hey, man, Brandon, it's been dope having you on, man. Sure. Before I let you go, man, how can folks check out the show and also how can they catch you on social media? Oh, yes, sir. Definitely check me out at Locked on Wizards on, um, on YouTube and on the podcast side. And I also do the commander's content at Washington Football Maniacs. I'm going to have you do... that, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I'm actually a media caster for the new pro sports fan app. So definitely, definitely recommend that. So like I said, man, um, I'll be at shoot arounds, practices at the games. Right, you know, cool, cool. I'm trying to stay busy, man. So <laughs> definitely check mm-hmm. me out at Twitter at uh, Brandon underscore seven Scott. So hey, hey, Brandon, thanks for being on.